Okay, so vlog number two. Um, first one seemed to go quite well, had some positive feedback, so I thought I'd keep this going. I'm not actually at a wedding today or tomorrow, um, but if I'm going to keep this going, I'm just going to try and do it as regularly as I can. Um, so I thought today I would just answer a couple of questions and just say what I'm up to um, at the moment. So I'm back in my home studio. Um, I'm actually putting something together here because I'm in the process of filming um, a new online course for people that want to improve their wedding videography in a sort of creative way rather than it being about business and things this is going to be more like um yeah how to improve your actual craft i suppose it's going to be called wedding cinematics um i'll put a link in the description if you want to if you want to learn a little bit more about that but it's not done yet i'm in the process of doing it and um, have some lights set up and some mics and things and i'm going to be filming all of that um i filmed some of it but i've got some more to do um so yeah that's one thing i'm doing this week but at the same time, even though I don't have an overseas wedding coming up for a little while, um, I am having to spend a little time preparing for that and booking flights and doing accommodation, all that sort of thing. So it's something I thought I'd mention if you're looking at getting into overseas weddings is you do spend a lot more time on that planning process. So I have a wedding. Um, the most the most challenging one is I have a wedding in Poland in August, followed immediately by a wedding in France um, the week after and then I have to go back to Poland so yeah trying to get my head around that um, booking all the flights to make that work uh, the accommodation car rental in different places looking into like car rental across borders all that sort of thing all makes it an interesting challenge and it's definitely something you're going to spend a lot more of your time doing if you do more overseas work and to be fair it's probably not something you're really going to completely build into your costs. Like there is just more time spent on that sort of thing. There has to be an element of you thinking it's worth it for some other reason other than you're sort of counting up every hour because you are just going to spend more time on all that logistics. You could get someone else. I know people who have assistants, um, PA, something like that, and you could you could use someone to just plan out all your travel and things. I've thought about it, but, you know, I... I just about managed to do these things and I like that element of control. If there's a way, for instance, I have a bit of a gap between these two weddings I'm doing that I mentioned, um, I will figure out a way of having like a little bit of a holiday or something in between. And I want to be doing that. I want to be looking that up, not someone else. So um, if it was purely a flying in and flying out sort of thing, you could maybe get someone else to do it. But for me, I often try and turn these things into a little bit of a trip to make it worth it. So. Anyway, that is just time consuming and working out travel costs for people, um, quoting for the travel, um, how you go about that. It's all it's all fun stuff because, you know, flight prices change and accommodation might go up or people might not be aware of the fact they're getting married in August in like in the south of France. It's going to be very expensive to stay there and there's nothing I can do about that. Like I don't need to stay in the in the fanciest hotels or whatever, but there's a limit to what you can put up with, mainly security of your gear. You know, you want to be somewhere where your stuff's going to be safe when you're not there. Um, so yeah, I use a mixture of Airbnb and hotels, um, the usual sort of thing, but I keep it fairly simple, but yeah, there's got to be an element of comfort and security there, obviously. Um, so yeah, I, I would think about that if you're looking into overseas work, just be aware of the fact that compared to this one in London I'm doing, for instance, this weekend, it's just, so easy you know it's just on the day travel and um you know I'd be home in the evening um it's all in one place I, you know i know london so i've lived in london a long time so it's that sort of thing just so much more straightforward um i also was quoting for a wedding for next year in italy and same sort of thing like on the call even though it's over a year away couples obviously understandably want to know about price and that sort of thing and how much everything's going to cost but you can't even look up flights that far in advance for one thing. So I can't even give them an accurate um, cost for how much my flights will be next August or September or whatever, because the flights haven't come out yet. So there's all things like that. You have to give people an idea and be fair with them, tell them you'll, you'll keep them up to, updated with the price and everything like that. But if someone else comes in with a price because they're willing to just lock in a price and take a risk on it, they'd probably get the booking over you, but you could get really stung with that. You know, flights could go up massively and you've said, oh, I'll just do it and 
swallow the cost and then you swallow a lot of the cost. And not only um, are you away for multiple days and that sort of thing, but like I say, there's all this added admin that goes with it. It isn't really worth you coming down at that point. You know, you don't want to be paying for your own travel unless, you know, it's just something you really want to do. But in principle, um, yeah, I would say you just have to be realistic with people. Say, look, I can tell you how much everything's going to be in, a, in an estimate of the flights, but I will tell you before I book them. I also think I had someone ask in the comments about um, what, what gear I take to an overseas wedding. So I thought I'd quickly um, cut to a clip here of me just going through my overseas camera bag. It's a bit different to what I take to a UK wedding. I'd say with UK weddings, there's always just more scope for taking extra things, redundancy, extra batteries, extra memory cards, extra lights, extra light stands, whatever, you know, with with overseas weddings, you're really keeping it down to to a minimal um, amount of gear. So yeah, I'll take you through my my overseas bag because that's probably more interesting. Most people know what they take to like a UK wedding. So yeah, this is what I take to an overseas wedding. Um, I have my MacBook Air. I have a little MacBook Air there that I take with me traveling. It's good just for some simple editing, um, some admin. I also use it to back up my footage. So yeah, it's got this little thing for my SSD uh, to go in. So I can also edit on the plane a little bit if I want. Um, yeah, then SSD I take with me, uh, two terabyte. That just gives me space to back up the wedding and a little bit of other stuff to get on with. Audio gear, I have two Tascams here, black and a white one. Um, I also have some TX's 50s in there for other speeches. I also take a little a trusty zoom there, um, which I normally just set up as for ambient sound, that sort of thing. Um, I then have Sony A7S III two of those and an a7 IV. Yeah, these are on my own it's my a7 IV. sometimes take a few stills on there but it's also just matches well with the other cameras so it's a good sort of c camera um i sometimes think i can shoot with two cameras but i definitely want two so if i drop one three is just the good combination to have really um lens wise i've got the little G 24 mil. I just like that as a little wide lens just to have on me. Um, I have this Voigtlander 65 millimeter lens, um, which is also a sort of not quite a macro, but it's almost a macro. So it's good for some stuff like that. Um, and then my 40 mil Voigtlander, which is the lens I use nearly all the time. I love this lens it's sort of metal. It's solid. Uh, opens really wide, opens to 1.2, yeah, I love that focal length, so that's my main lens for the day. Um, batteries, I've got a few more charging, but that's where my batteries will be. Now, a debate with this lens, I, I take it, it's a little 18mm Samyang. I just like it just in case, just in case there's something dramatic to get, or, you know, got a really wide shot worth getting, I, I, I like to take it, because it's so small and light. Um, memory cards in there and a little LED panel I use just if necessary. Um, what else have I got? So I've got my charging cables for my laptop, a new addition to my gear, this thing which is just great, which I've just switched on. Um, yeah, this will power, well, obviously it will charge my phones, it will charge batteries, it will charge anything to do with my camera gear, but it will also power my laptop so it's just a great thing to have for more for long haul flights but yeah also if i just find i've got no power at the venue or something like that i can pretty much charge everything with that um a couple of little boring other cables and then that's pretty much it for the gear um and then in terms of my other luggage i, I take a little cage for my camera in here anything that's really heavy that i don't want to carry in my main luggage i've got some cleaner there for my sensors a couple of little tripods, I've got a small rig tripod and another Vanguard tripod there. Little dead cap for my mic and um, some waterproof stuff for cameras, adapters, nothing that exciting. But that's sort of all my stability stuff and all that. Um, but yeah, that's my main gear for the wedding. Yes, yeah, so hopefully that was of some help to someone. 
Um, obviously in the comments, ask any questions you want about gear. It's obviously not a definitive list of what you have to take for an overseas wedding. This is just what I do, but my style is fairly minimal anyway. So my setup for a UK wedding isn't that different to, to what I'm taking to an overseas wedding. I don't use gimbals or anything. So this is pretty much what I take anyway. I, I use a different bag in the UK, a bigger bag, just gives me more space for some extra little bits. Um, so with overseas weddings, it's all about getting everything into those into those bags that you can take on the plane with you. That's the most important thing. And so yeah, I've already mentioned that I'm filming this course called Wedding Cinematics, um, where I, you know, I sort of deep dive into what makes, what can make your wedding films more like a movie and less like a sort of a video. Um, so yeah, that's coming soon, but it also got me thinking, I thought I'd do a series on YouTube where I watch some people's wedding films and give them a bit of an appraisal, a bit of constructive criticism, um, you know, say ways that maybe they could tell the story differently, whatever. Um, so yeah, it's something I've been thinking about, something I've been asked about, and I put a shout out on Instagram, um, and I've already had quite a nice response of people sending me films they'd like me to look at. So this is probably something I'm going to start doing soon. If it's something you'd be interested in, um, if you'd like me to watch one of your films or give it a bit, a bit of a watch, um, and you're obviously happy with it being put out on my channel, then yeah, either put a message in the comments or I'll put a link to my Instagram in the description and you can contact me on there. Um, it's not something I'm not looking to like roast anyone or to make it, you know, anything. I'm not going to be overly harsh about anything. It's more just ways I think you could possibly improve things. Um, you know, I've been filming weddings for 15 years now. I feel like I've got a handle on, you know, what works, what doesn't work from mistakes I've made in the past or that sort of thing. Um, I used to film weddings very locally, lots of barn weddings, I, I changed to shooting more city weddings, um, I've obviously filmed overseas weddings, so I've probably got a fairly broad experience of, um, of filming different types of weddings, so I get where you're coming from. If people send me a film from a, you know, from quite a small, low-key sort of venue, um, I'm obviously not going to sort of compare it to something big and lavish, so yeah, it, it could work, um, I'll see how it goes. I'll see how, how people feel about it. Um, but I think it could be interesting. And I, I, it was something I was thinking about while I was filming my course, that actually I do, I quite enjoy that side of it, you know, deciding why something's working, why something isn't working. It's just, you know, so it's a bit of fun. If it's something you'd be interested in and you're obviously happy for your, like I say, your films to maybe go up on my channel where I, where I talk through them, then yeah, drop me a message. Um, but the rest of my week really is a couple more meetings with clients, um, online video calls, get ready for my wedding at the weekend. Like I say, I'm shooting in London at the weekend. It's for someone who works in the industry, so that's always quite nice. Um, you sort of know how everything works, or I just know that sort of be planned out nicely. Um, so it should be a fairly easy one. Not sure I'll, I'll vlog it, I'll think about it, but I'm not sure there's just gonna be enough time to do it. But if I do, I'll obviously, You'll see that appear next week if you subscribe to the channel. Um, but I'm definitely going to do do more of these, and I have a couple of couple more interesting trips coming up that, yeah, could be interesting to people in terms of logistics and how I deal with it. Particularly those weddings I say I've got coming up later in the year where I've got to get between like two weddings, which is something I've done a few times, and it's always a bit. Um, this isn't too bad because they're not. There's a bit of a gap between them, but you know I've done weddings before where. I've got to fly the next day and I've got to be there the next morning and you know I've landed on the morning of the first day of filming and that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, I'll I'll try and talk through that stuff as much as possible. Obviously this has been a bit of a simpler vlog than the last one, I'm not overseas and that sort of thing and probably a lot shorter. But um, I will be doing more of these out and about weddings and some more overseas weddings. So do give me a subscribe if you want to see more of these and do give the video a like um, if it's something you're interested in because I'm trying to gauge whether or not this is something I, you know, I should carry on doing for the season. And um, yeah, do leave your questions in the comments because I'm always open to like answering people's questions. Um, I enjoy helping where I can. And like I say, I've got some other things coming up, some other little video series coming up and my course coming up. So I'll be talking a little bit more about that in, in future videos, as well as taking you to some more overseas weddings. So yeah, like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.